I've got a really cool thing to show you that you can do in model driven apps. In this video, we're going to cover custom pages. This is where the world of model driven apps and canvas apps comes together. It starts to make sense why it's all called power apps. I'm going to show you how you can build this. So this is a custom page inside your model driven app. Now we know with model driven apps, we are building out a data model. We're working with forms and views and things. With a custom page, we get all of the tools of a Canvas app available to us. So you can create a pixel perfect page. You can have multiple tables on the one page. You can connect to external data sources. There are so many possibilities here. You can create a custom page as a full page, which is what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. No code required at all. But custom pages can also be used to behave as dialogues or side panels and things in your app as well. There's a little bit of code involved in that. Check out the link to the documentation below if you would like to know more, but I'm not going to cover that here. All right, let's get into this and start creating our custom pages. My scenario here is that I'm working with a model driven app where I've got my contacts in there and I want to be able to see what they're doing on social media. I'm going to use Twitter as an example, nice public data source to show you how you can use this to connect up to another data source. And a huge shout out and thank you to all of my friends on the Twitter community who put their hands up and said that they would love to be part of this demo. You will see your name here if you're one of those people. Now, the first most important thing I'm going to tell you is when you get started, please make sure that you're building inside a solution. It matters for this. If you go ahead and create a custom page somewhere else and not in a solution, you're going to have trouble finding it later. You can always add it to your solution after the fact. If you do miss this step, you're going to have a much easier path if you start in your solution. So here I am. I'm going to go into the menu here to choose new. I'm going to go into app and choose page. And what we have on the screen here is something that is going to look very much like a Canvas app, if you're familiar with that. If Canvas apps are completely new to you, you might want to go check out my tutorial for complete beginners there. Let me navigate you around the screen here and explain a few things. If this is stuff you already know, just jump ahead to the next chapter. So what we've got in the middle is a blank canvas. We can bring whatever we like in here and design this down to the last pixel. Down the side here, we've got our navigation menu. So I'm in the tree view. And as we build out the app, you're going to see all of the components being added in there plus are all of the different pieces that I can add in here. Just be aware this is not exactly the same as everything you can do in a Canvas app. This is a different object, a custom page, and there are some limitations in there. Check out the link in the description for the known limitations if you want to know more about that. But there is plenty that you can do here. We've got our data menu. So this is where we're going to connect up to the different data sources and some other things in here to connect up to media and other resources, which we're not going to use too much of today. So let's start in the tree view here on the screen and I'm going to start adding components. And the important thing here when we're working with creating a custom page in a model driven app is that we want to build a responsive page because your model driven app without you even having to do anything or know about it is fully responsive. If you scroll to different screen sizes, you will find that the components are responding to that. So if you're creating a page for your model driven app, you really want to go with that as well. So I'm going to go in here to insert something. I'm going to scroll down here to the section called layout and you'll see these two things here horizontal container and vertical container now these are the pieces that are enabling us to build a responsive app I'm just going to take a minute and explain this because it does my head in a little bit with the names horizontal and vertical with those images because see how it looks a little bit like the wrong way around so the concept here is that a vertical container means that the pieces that you're going to put in it are stacked vertically so i might have a header and then a search bar and then a gallery or something like that so you can see that's why the the icon looks like it's going like that because we're stacking them vertically a horizontal container is something that I'm going to use if I want things to sit side by side in a horizontal pattern. So I might be creating my header and want like a label and an icon and a picture and the person's name or whatever across or a series of galleries side by side. That's a horizontal container. So on my page here, I'm actually going to start with a vertical container because I want that scenario sort of like a header and then search and galleries and so on. So we're going to put that into the app. Now you'll notice as soon as that jumps onto the screen here, we have got the object that I'm working with, the component that I'm working with, and then all of the properties that relate to that component down the side. I've got a properties drop down menu here, so I can choose that and the formula bar will relate to those properties. 
I like to go back to my tree view menu, especially if this is new for you, just so you can start to see the structure that is going to be built out here. For each of the components that I add, just to stop it being confusing, I'm going to give it a new name. So we're going to call this the main screen, um, which is just the sort of overarching container. Now, what we want to do here is to make this take up the whole screen. And when we're working with responsive components, we don't, we don't sort of drag and drop them. This one actually allows you to, but many of them won't allow you to do that because we want to set the size based on things that are relative to other parts of the application. So we want this to be relative to the full size of the screen rather than dragging it to be particular dimensions because then whatever size screen we're on, we're good. So first of all, we have the X and Y properties, which determines the actual sort of starting point for the component. So I'm going to go into here, my drop down list of properties and choose the X property. And we're going to set that to zero and watch what happens. It's right at the zero location on the X axis. And the same for Y, we're going to go in and give that a zero as well. So now we've got it in that top corner zero. And then we want the total width and height to match the width and height of whatever is going on with the screen. So again, for this component, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find the width property. And we're going to put a formula in rather than an absolute value. That's an absolute value of 638. We're going to make this the same width as the parent, which is the whole screen here. So we type in parent and you'll see it's helpfully suggesting that for me already, the width of the parent. And same here, we're going to go to the height and you reckon you can guess what this one will be? Parent.height. All right, so there we have our first vertical container taking up the whole screen. Now, it looks like we haven't done much so far, but that's the thing that's going to enable everything within it to be responsive. We're actually going to build out a hierarchy of responsive components in here. I'll take you through it, and we're going to make sure that we see that hierarchy on the tree view as we go. Next up, I'm going to add a header to my page so that I've got a nice heading at the top. And I'm going to use a container for that as well so that it is also responsive if I make something centered that it will move along with the app. So the easiest way to do this is as you build out the hierarchy, you want to make sure you're adding the components in the right spot here. So I'm going to click on the component that I want to add it under, and then I'm going to go into the plus menu. And now I'm going to add my horizontal container. Now that immediately takes up the whole space. Again, I don't, I can't drag and drop the, this thing because it's responsive. Remember, everything needs to be relative. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go into this flexible height property because I don't want it to have flexible height. Do you see there it's already changed back? I want to determine the height myself. So I can now go in and change this to be, let's see, 100. That might be a, a bit much for a header. Let's, let's bring it down to 50. There we go. All right. So what we can do now is give this a nice background color. So we'll make it a nice sort of blue. There we go. Now I can add other components into that horizontal piece. So what I want now is to add a label, which is where I can put the heading. So again, let's just go back here. I'm inside container two. So I choose that first. Now I click my plus button and I add a label and that's added that in there. Now I can set the height of my label relative to that. So I've got a height here of 32, or I can say, actually, I want that to be set by the container so that it is there. I want to choose flexible width in this case to be on because I want this to take the width of the container and be flexible with it. And now I can put in what I want my text to be. So we're going to call this one, I will call this one a Twitter dashboard. I am going to give that a nice white color so that we can see it. I'm going to make it bold and then I'm going to choose my font size. Now, just be careful with the font size here because <laughs> the way the custom pages work is that the font size renders much bigger than what you might be used to. Here are the details. So you'll see, for instance, that if you want something to end up looking like a 17 point font, you want to be using 12.75. So <laughs> the first time I did this, my font was out of control. I'm going to live dangerously here and make this a 14 point font. And then I'm going to put it in the middle. All right. This will actually look bigger on the screen when it renders. Now, what I've got, horizontal container, label inside the horizontal container, centered, all good. Next thing I want to do is to add another piece in my overall back to the sort of hierarchy here of my vertical container. I want to add something that's going to have a search bar and some other information. And then below that, I'm going to add a couple of galleries. So let's keep with the naming conventions here because it is going to make it a whole lot easier for me. So we're going to rename this to be header container. 
and this one is my header label. All right, now I want to add another piece inside that main screen container. So we're going to go in here and I will add another horizontal container. Again, I want this one to not be flexible height. I want that to have a height of 50 as well. And just to get the rest of the structure of my screen while I'm going on in here, I'm going to go back into the main screen and I'm also going to add another horizontal container like that to put a couple of galleries side by side. Now that is taken up, see what's happened there? It's automatically taken up the rest of the screen because I'm doing that stacking inside the container. That's all good to go. I'm just going to leave that one to behave as it is. So let's add the galleries in here first, and then I'm going to go back and work with this other container in the middle. So we're going to rename this one to be gallery container. And galleries are what we use to display data from other data sources. So I'm going to show you here that we're going to connect it to a table inside Dataverse, as well as that external table for Twitter. So with my gallery container highlighted, I'm going to go in and add a vertical gallery. I'm going to choose my data source. So it first wants to connect to Dataverse. Awesome, that's where we're headed here. I'm going to search for my contact table because what I want down the side is that list of contacts. So that will automatically connect to that table. There we go. Now I want to choose a particular view here. I've already set up a view in my model driven app that is social media contacts that just finds the people and you might start to see some familiar names here now who have a Twitter handle associated with them. So that's a view that I've already got in the app that I can access here. All right, so far so good. I want another gallery side by side. So we're gonna go back here again into the gallery container and add another vertical gallery. And you'll see what happens there because I'm in a horizontal container that we've got the two galleries side by side. This time what I want to do is to make a connection to Twitter. Now I'm using Twitter in this case, but you can connect to any data source here. If you've got other business systems that you use, uh, if you want to bring in productivity things, you could bring in connections to Teams or Planner to do so many options you can explore here. But this is the one I like to have a bit of fun with as a real life example. So I've connected to Twitter there. I've got a bunch of errors here because this isn't actually anything useful because I need to specify what's going on. So each connector has its own set of formulas. And you'll find as you create formulas that if you use a dot, it will give you a suggestion of what comes next. This is a expression language called PowerFX. There's a heap of stuff to learn in here, but I'll take you through this one as a, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, a, a tutorial. Each connector has its own things and you do get to know the, 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 uh, the one that you're using with. So this is actually going to be the user timeline is the thing that I'm looking for here. And you'll see it gives you a little bit of a hint as to what's needed here. So this is telling me it needs to be the username. So the username is coming from this gallery here because the idea is I'm going to select something and then see that person's timeline. Let's go back over here. I'm just going to do something here so that we're consistent. We're going to call this contact gallery and I'm also going to rename this one to be Twitter gallery. So in my formula here, this is the user timeline and what I'm going to be looking for is in the contact gallery and I can put in a dot. I'm looking for whatever I've selected and of that one that I've selected, I'm looking for the field or column called Twitter handle because you can see that's in there. So I'm grabbing from my contacts, whichever one is selected, the Twitter handle. Now, the next thing I need is a comma here in the suggested things. And now it's telling me the next piece I need in my formula is this little syntax here, max results column number. How many results do I want in there? So we'll use the curly brackets, max results. And the default is 20. That seems good to me. We'll put that in, close the curly brackets, and then don't forget to close the brackets on your formula. All right. Now, a couple of other things. It seems to be doing something now, but I've still got some error messages. I just need to tidy this up a bit. So I'm going to go in and say I just want a layout of one line because I don't want all of those other things in there. That's got rid of all the errors now because it's starting to align. That's not terribly useful though, right? Let's see what the fields are here. Created at. Eh. We don't want that. <laughs> so we can go down and I actually want the tweet text. So there we go. We're starting to see a Twitter feed here. That's not really enough space. So what I want to do here is click level out. So now I've selected the whole gallery. And what I want to do here is set a property, which is the template size. So that's the size of what's going on inside it. I'm going to set that to 70. There we go. A bit more spaced out. I also want this to take up the full, see how this is not taking up the full height of that container? So we're going to go in here and say that the height, 
stretch to the whole thing. And then I'm going to click back inside the gallery with this little edit button and now again click in to that piece of text. And this one I can actually drag and sort of take up a little bit more space inside each piece of the container. All right, looking good so far. Now I want the data to be a little bit more balanced here because the one on the left is really quite small and the one on the right is not much at all. Um, before I do that, let's just save this because <laughs> that's always a good idea. Probably should have done that earlier. So we're going to call this um, Twitter dashboard. Whatever name you give it here is what will come up when you put it into your model driven app. So it's good to do something sensible there. And I can preview the app by clicking preview or I could hold down the alt key just to preview it in here. So we've got users down the side here and tweets down the side. If I click on each user in turn, I'm going to see their tweets popping up in the, in the, in the right hand side there. If I minimize this and drag it around a little bit, you'll see that it's responsive. See how my heading is moving across and the other things are moving across in there. Looking good so far. Let's close that preview, maximize the screen again there, and let's keep going. I'm going to just zoom this down again. That's sort of taken up more space than I want. Now, to get these a little bit more evenly spaced, what I'm gonna do is click on one of those containers and we can see here that we can have the fill portion. So flexible width needs to be on because flexible width is gonna sort of move around as things happen. But this is saying that it's one portion of one and this one is also saying that it's taking up one. We're actually going to turn this on. So now it knows there's two portions in there because we've set them both at flexible width. So the container understands that it's got two things to work with. But I'm gonna say for this one on the right, I want that actually to take up two spots and you'll see that it now understands that there's three. So I've created more width there. If I wanted to go even further, I could say three and it would take up three out of four. I think I like um, two out of three a little bit better. So we're gonna go with that. So again, I'm not dragging and dropping those sizes. It's relative within the container. Now, the other thing I wanna do in here is to bring in some navigation so that, I mean, I can click on the person, but I quite like to have the little arrow in there to make it a bit clearer. And I can also from my custom page, navigate back to the rest of the model driven app. So you can have things like plus buttons in here to navigate back to a form to create, or we can put something in here that would allow you to click through, not just to view their tweets on this dashboard, but to actually click through and look at their profile, the contact page. So we're going to go inside this and edit this. And then I'm going to back in my plus menu here, this time I'm gonna add an icon. Now you'll see what happens there when I add it inside a gallery. If I've got it right, it's added it into all of the pieces of the gallery. So let's just move this across a little bit here. And once you've got your icon in here, we can go in here and choose which icon we want rather than scrolling through them all, I can just search. So I'm gonna choose a little person icon in there. And then when I select that icon, what do I want it to do? So we're gonna get rid of that formula and we're gonna add in a formula here to tell it when you click that, I want it to navigate back to that main contact record in the system. So we use the navigate command and we're going to put in that this is the contact gallery selected and close the bracket. So that's the way that that formula works is that means it will navigate back to that selected contact in the app. You can do more sophisticated things with the formulas, but that will do for now. Go back here, let's go in and add another icon. And this time I'm going to add the right hand arrow. So let's grab that one from there. We will move that across. I want this one to be the one that I can select to display the tweets. If the person doesn't understand, they need to click on the name. That one is just selecting the parent record. That's exactly as I want it to behave. So I don't need to make any other changes there. All right, I've got a header, I've got gallery. What am I going to do with this last piece in the middle here? What I want is to have a search box because I've got all of these uh, records on the screen here and I want to be able to search across my contacts. And what I also want to do is display a little bit more information from the person's Twitter profile. So this is a horizontal container, remember, and I'm going to bring a couple of different components in here. So with this container selected, I'm gonna go over here and bring in a text input control. This is something that allows the user to type something in, which is what we want for a search experience. Let's set that to be the same height as the container. 
the value of this is text box, which is just a default value that's not much use. We're going to put that in there. There's an option here for a tool tip. So we can say search for contacts, put that in there. So that just sort of gives a hint in there. Let's make this one a fill color of sort of a, a light gray so that it's somewhere you can see that you might want to type in. And that's all good. Now I'm going to go back to my screen. Look at how many things are in here now. Um, we're going to call this one. Let's give this one a name. So again, we know what we're doing. We'll call this one uh, search container. And text box two here, we're going to rename to be search box. All right. Now, the way that the search box works is that we need to put the formula on the gallery, not actually on the box. So if we want to search by what's in there, we're going to add that in. So we've already got it filtered so that it's filtering on those contacts. And I'm going to build up a little bit more of a complex formula here just so that it works if there's nothing in there. Because otherwise, if I just put a search around this and there's nothing in the search box, then the gallery ends up being blank. So we've got a formula here, which is an if formula. If you're familiar with Excel, some of these things will start to feel a little bit familiar to you. Uh, let's just sort of space that one out a bit so that I can see what I'm working with. So we're going to open a bracket here. And so what's the logical test? We've got a logical test here called is blank. Is this if <laughs> if something is blank what's the thing we're looking for is blank if that text box is blank so we called that one search box so if the search box and again we need the dot in there to say what about the search box the value of the search box so if the value of the search box is blank that's our first test then the true value is going to be if it's blank just show us that list as we already had it so we're going to leave that as is and if it's not blank, then what we're going to do is take the search based on this thing again. So we're going to search on that filtered list because I just want to use that filtered list every time. Don't worry if this is starting to get too much if you're a beginner, um, because this does take a while to figure these things out if you're new to it. And what we're doing here is finding the search box value. So this is a search formula. I've got a couple of formulas nested in here. You can grab, let's just click away from that and kind of make it bigger and go back in there. So we've got, if it's blank, then if it's true, just show me the filtered value. If it's false, then do a search on that filtered view for whatever the value of the search box is. And we're looking for the full name of the contact. So you can search on various things in here, but we're just going to search on the full name. I'm going to close brackets twice and then all my error messages are gone. We're all happy. All right, now let's add some other pieces in here. So clicking again on that horizontal container, I want to bring in the image of the person that they use on Twitter and their description. So let's bring those pieces in. I'm going to use a label for the description. Again, let's make that the same height as the container and also an image now you'll see what happened there. I wasn't selected inside the right hierarchy. Let's use an undo and try that again. Always click back on the place where you want it to be. So I've got that container and now I'm going to choose image and now it's put it inside the container. That's much better. Just watch for that. Always go back to your hierarchy if you're not sure why things are behaving in the wrong place. And if it's in the wrong spot, then you can redo that the way I've just done. Now, this image here you'll see is too big, right? It's got a height of 100. So I actually want to set this to be a height of 50. Um, and I also want to make the width 50 as well. Now, instead of having flexible width here, because I could do the same thing that we did with those galleries and set the, the, you know, the portions of how long they're going to take, I actually want these things to align with the pieces below them. So what we're going to do, like we did in that very first step where we brought the container in and set it relative to the size of the page, I'm going to do the same thing here. So for this one, I'm going to go in and make the width of this the same as the contact gallery. So instead of an absolute value, I've set that to be contact gallery width. I'm going to do the same here with the label. So I can go in and instead of that, we're going to make this one the same as the Twitter gallery dot width. Okay, that's good. What happened to the image? That's no good. I've got a 50 pixel image there that I'm setting at a straight value. So we need to allow for that. So I'm going to subtract 50. There it is <laughs> back again. So this is looking good. So now we've got our um, 
search box relative to the size of the gallery underneath it. We've got our label and our image. Let's bring the pieces in there. So that's the width of it. I'm going to choose another property here, which is the text. So label, let's get rid of that. What I want this to be is I'm going to go to that Twitter connector. And now this is where I know that we know how this connector works. There's a piece in there called user. Who is the user? So for the Twitter user, who is it? It's from that contact gallery selected. This is the same thing I did in the previous um, in the previous uh, thing to to choose the gallery search contact gallery dot selected Twitter handle. So that is the the name of that. Close the bracket on that, and then now what is the property of the user? So the Twitter connector returns all of these things about the user. I can find the description, full name, location, all sorts of things there about their followers and so on. I want the description, so we're going to choose that. And that should come up. There we go. Good on you, Nick Dolman, for being my first volunteer. <laughs> Yours is coming up there. Let's give that a little bit of a colour just so that we can see what's going on there. So let's match that blue at the top. And then the image here, I want to go in and set a formula for that as well. So that's going to be my Twitter, again, my user. Same formula, contact. See, it starts to get a bit repetitive and you start to get the hang of it. And this time I want the profile image and there's Nick's smiling face all right I think we're good let's save this thing now you need to publish there's two stages of publishing here so you'll remember when we started here that we built we started in our solution and we built a page so we're publishing the page which is done now what I need to do is go back and add it into my model driven app so within the solution here's my model driven app and what you need to do here is go into edit and make sure you choose this edit in preview so that we're going into the modern editing experience because this is where you'll find this. You've got your navigation menu here and you're going to click on this add page button, select custom, next, use an existing custom page and there it is there. You'll see I've had a couple of practice goes before I recorded the video here. Now don't freak out when you see this message here. This is telling you that you need to publish your model driven app as well as having published the custom page. Stick around, I'll show you in a minute how you go back and edit the custom page. But each time you edit, if you are editing, you will need to publish it again in the model driven app because the model driven app, even once you've added it, isn't aware of changes to the page. So just you've got those two steps involved in publishing. Let's say, okay, thanks for that. Save what we've done in adding that to the menu and then click publish. You get another warning here that's telling you that the preview needs to be refreshed. It can take 30 seconds or so for this process to finish. So just sit tight. It's going to be good in a minute. Now, when you're doing it for the first time, it's also going to prompt if I'm using a connector. So it's prompting me that I want to make sure that I'm authenticating that connector. And there's my app starting to come to life. Now we're not seeing the full screen view here, but we're all good. Let's go ahead and click play. Before I do that, just some other options here. So we've got the content type. You could change the title of it here. It's defaulted to what I had before. You can also give it a different icon, which is using a web resource. So I'm going to choose just from something that I've got in there to make it a little bit nicer. That standard icon that comes up is a little bit ugly. Uh, and so we will save that again. Probably should have thought of this before. <laughs> Publish that again. And then we can hit play and we're good to see the thing in action. So I'm in my model of an app. There's my new Twitter dashboard. I can click on that. All right, let's have a little bit of a mess around. Firstly, with the responsiveness, see how I'm scrolling down and it's still fitting everything in on the screen. I can scroll down my gallery here. There we go. All those wonderful people who volunteered to, uh, to do something here. I can click and start to browse all of these uh, different tweets and things that we've got here. I can also use the search box here. So if I wanted to go in and search for someone, it can actually go in there and then I could click on that and view the tweets there as well. We clear that and it will go back to the start. Now we can also remember I've set this up so that we can click on someone here and return to the record in the system. So that's now opening that page in the model driven app. So everything I'm doing there, I'm building this custom page that has full interaction and awareness of what's going on in the model driven app. What if I need to edit it? I hear you say, we're going to go back into here, navigate back. And if you want to edit it, you'll find it inside the solution. So just be aware you won't find this inside the apps. If you go into your apps menu, it's not like a canvas app. In fact, it's not a canvas app. It's a custom page. If you click on this, it takes you back into your app. 
I could make any other changes I want here. Let's say I decided that I didn't want that to be that color anymore and I wanted it to be a, you know, a pale blue instead to, to look better. So I can make that change. And let's say I also wanted to um, make this font size a little bit bigger in the end. That's all good. Once I'm happy with all of that, I can publish it again. You'll see it automatically saved as well. And then don't forget, we're going to go back and hit publish again inside the model driven app for that to take effect. I would love to hear from you. What else would you like to see with custom pages? What are the ways that you think you could be using this? Because I think there are many and I'm happy to create more content if you would like to see it. In the meantime, don't forget to check out my other tutorials on all of the wonderful things you can do with model driven apps. Thanks very much for watching.